Hey guys, this is Eve with Scrapbooking with Me, and we're going to finish up our Traveler's Notebook that we've been working on. We're going to finish this up today, and don't go away because there's some surprises in store for you. We're making some different things that, even if you don't use a Traveler's Notebook, that you'll be able to use in your albums or your mini albums, whatever. But... I got this collection in. It's a brand new collection from Prima, and it is called Georgia Blues, and I fell in love with it when it come through the door. This paper is absolutely gorgeous. As you can see, I've almost used a whole stack of it already. Um, it is very, very pretty. It has the gold foiling on it. Isn't that pretty? And I love the bike. Happy day. And let's see. What else we got here? This one's really pretty. Looks like old ads and things. And then there's some cutouts or ads or whatever you want to do with it. And then this page is really pretty. I've used that. So, I have almost used all of this. I don't know how much of this we got in. I have not even checked. I've been working on some different projects, so I haven't even looked. But I will put whatever is still available. Now, we had some people that bought it as soon as it come through the door. So, um, But I will put whatever is available in the store and put the link below. So we're gonna, we have been using this and we've already completed. Now I, I went back, let me find it. This is the album that we did the other day that it didn't film exactly. And I give you a little walkthrough, I think of it. But um, since I was using this, the one that I did the cover for this didn't exactly match. So I went back and just put some of that paper on the cover of this one so that it would match. I didn't change anything on the inside. The inside still just like it was. I just went back and changed um, the cover. So the inside is still the same. I'm loving it. So there's one, and I've already trimmed it out, so it's finished. This is another one that I did this morning. Look, using that paper. Isn't that pretty? I'm telling you. And I made a little dashboard to put in here in this front pocket. Or you could use this when you're writing and there's something bumpy under there. You can lay it under there and write on that and then it it doesn't um, affect your writing so much. Now, I laminated these with my laminator and I did get a new 12 by 12. It's a 12 inch by 12 inch laminator. Well, it's a 12 inch laminator. You can laminate 18 foot if you want to as long as it keeps going through there. But it's 12 inches wide from Amazon. I've been watching it for a long time. It was regular $70 and I kept watching it and watching it and watching it. So it came down to $20. I think it was $20. Yeah, $20 I think. So I got it. I will link it below. Um, I always wait for things to go on sale and then I got the pocket, the pouches, the 12 by 12 pouches on sale too. So I will link those below if you're interested in that. But this is the one that we put together this morning. Now, this is just a little pocket, and I just stuck that little piece in there. And then there's some of that paper. There's some of the paper that we dyed, and I just glued this edge together and then put a piece of that paper on there. And there's another little side pocket. There's a little piece of paper that I had on my desk, and I just included that in there. And there's that. And then this is the pocket that I'm going to show you how to make this morning. This is very, very simple. Now, I will tell you this. I cut mine out with the Cricut, but before you cut me off right here and say, I don't have a Cricut, why don't you show something else? I will, I am going to make a PDF file of this cut and put it over, put the link below so that you can go over and print it out. And hopefully, I, I can't guarantee it's going to be the same size that I have here because I don't know how your printer's going to print it, but I'm going to put it in as big as this one is, and then hopefully if you'll check actual size on your printer, maybe it'll print it out at actual size, and then you can have these too. So I, and then also for you people who have the Cricut, I'll put that link, the file link below where I got this. 
um, I put a little magnet on there so that that would close. And then there's the other side of that. There's the other side of that paper. And then there's another little pocket. And then let's see what I got. Oh, that one stuck to that one. Oh no. There is that. And then there's that one. I like the rough edges on there. And then there's another little dashboard if we need it in here. Or I may take it out and tuck it in one of the other ones. And then that's just the back cover. So now, I like this paper so much that one of these I actually have sideways. This one's right. This one I have, I used it sideways. I didn't want to waste it. So as you can see, the writing is going like this, but I didn't care. I thought that was really pretty and you really can't tell. So... I just went ahead and used it. Now this one, I made a smaller version of that little pocket. I put this a Velcro dot on this and I can tuck some little things in there. This collection comes, or you can get the little tickets that go with it. So I'll probably stick some little tickets down in there to use in my notebook. And I will leave the file for that one too and the PDF. Oh shoot. I um closed some of these up while the glue on this was still wet, so. There's some that my grandbaby sprayed for me. I know that this paper doesn't have pink in it, but after she took time spraying it, there was no way I could not put it in this book. So then here's another little pocket, and I've just got a few little pieces of the extra paper stuck in there in case I want to punch something out or whatever. This was, let me show you what this was. Hold on, let me grab it. Do you remember years, years, years ago? Let's see if it even has a date on it. It probably doesn't. I doubt it. Anyway, many, many moons ago, they came out with these little organizer things. And I bought, they were, they were on sale somewhere, and I bought a bunch of them, thinking I would probably use them, which I didn't. And I was digging through th some things the other day, and I ran up on them, and I thought, man, I, I need to use these for something. So what I did is I took one of these, I just tore it out of here, because I mean, I've got bunches of them, so it doesn't matter. And I trimmed it down, trimmed the top down. And see, there's where I tore it out. And then I folded it up. Well, it was already folded up. Let me take that back. It was already folded up on the bottom. So I trimmed this down a little bit and I trimmed this down so that it would fit in here. And then I glued it on the edge, and the other side you'll see back here. And then I just put a piece of paper, pattern paper, across it. So I've got another little pocket, and I'm making use out of that. That's been stuck in my stash forever. It was in my hoard vault. And do any of you have a hoard vault? No, surely not. And then here's another one of those pockets. And it's just got a Velcro on it. Oh, Velcro. It's got a magnet on it. There's another one of those um, papers that my granddaughter sprayed for me. And I will definitely write the date on those and who sprayed those for me too. Brooklyn did that. And then there's the other side of that. See, so there's another pocket right there that we can put some things in. Let's see if I've got something I can tuck in there. See? There's that. And then you can always journal, write whatever on the back side. So there's that back side of that paper that she sprayed and then there's that and then here I've got another um, tag and that is laminated so that I can use it in here when I start journaling now these need trimmed out as you can see I haven't trimmed them yet because I was gonna let you guys go along with me when I trim them so this will be our fourth little album and I'm not sure four is going to go in this book but I'm going to go ahead and make this one because I want to show you how they're made and if it'll if four will go we'll do it and if four won't go then we'll leave it out and I'll use it in another one so what I do is I, I don't fold this and crease it I just find my center on there and just kind of press it down lightly and the sizes of these are eight and a half by seven so that is the size of these and the pages as well so then i just go through my paper and i trim it all down to the same size and then i just start deciding what i want to put where so i'm going to put two of those plain sheets 
And then I've got one of these that she sprayed for me. Put another plain. I've got that one that we did with the coffee stains on it. And then I've got another one that she sprayed. A couple of the plain ones. And then here's one of those sheets like I was talking about. I uh, tore it out here, and then here's where it folds. And then I folded this one where I'd have a bigger pocket on this side and a smaller pocket on this side. And part of this is going to be trimmed off. You can fold these any way that you want, but that's where I'm going to put that one right there. And then just put another plain sheet for that part. Now, I put these together first. I take my cover, make sure it's on there. And then I just start pecking them down on the table. I want to make sure that this bottom is even. The other parts, the other sides don't have to be even. I just need one side that's even. And when I get it even, something is hindering me. Let's see. I think it's that sheet right there. So when I get that one side even, then I make sure that everything is pressed down in there really well. And then I just take my little clips and I clip them on just to hold it. And there we go with that. Now here's the pocket. This is how it will look on the file when you get it. What you need to do is lay this part, this is your flat part, flap part. So lay that one down in there, and I'll just kind of center it up from one end to the other. And then I just take my clips, and clip it up. And again, I just kind of press everything down, make sure everything looks pretty good, and it does. I always make sure I've got the right the pattern going the right way and that looks like I do. So we're ready to punch the holes. Now I just lay it this is just a piece of foam that came out of some packaging somewhere, who knows what. And I just lay it down on there so that I don't break my table here. And then I go by the crease that's in this and I come down about maybe an inch, inch and a half. Doesn't, you don't have to do it exact every time. All of mine are probably different. And I just use my pokey tool and I press it through there. And then I do the same thing on the bottom. And then you need to do one in the center and it's going to be right there. About right there. Now, while it's still clipped together, I take my thread, and this is just some white crochet thread, I think, that's what they use it for. I take my big needle, and I leave it on the spool. I don't cut it off because I tend to waste it when I cut it off. I leave it on the spool, and I start in the center. I go through the center hole from the inside out. Pull that out. I go back up to the top, but you could go to the top or the bottom, it doesn't matter. Come back through there. And then I go all the way down to the bottom and go back through. <clears throat> and then you're going to come back through the center. And when you come back through the center, you want to make sure that your thread is on the opposite side of this one. Like this is going to be your tail. Make sure when you come back through that you're on the opposite side of this string. So you've got one over here and one over here. So there we go. Go ahead and pull my needle off. And now I can save some thread by pulling this back through a little bit. Just need enough to tie. There we go. I think that's about right. So I cut that off, and then you want to pull both ways. Just kind of pull it that way, pull it that way a little bit, 
make sure it's not hung on anything back there and then tie a square knot double knot whatever you want to call it I just tie it a couple of times and then later if you want to you can go in there and put a little bit of glue I haven't found it necessary to do that but you can do that if you think that your thread is going to come loose this thread it, it's a cotton thread so I don't think it's going to come loose so there's our string on the outside and then I just take my tool and I go over that string and over that crease to match it up and make sure that it's a blue blue color now we can put our magnet on so we're going to put it I'm going to bring this down so that I'll know about where I need to put it in the center so we need to put it about right there that's where we're going to put it right there I'm going to put a little dot right there and these magnets, these are our basic gray magnets, and they already have the adhesive on the back side. So you just pull that little paper off. Look at my hands. You can tell I've been inking today. There you go. Then we can close this up. So we'll go ahead and put our glue right here. And I'm just going to use art glitter glue. And you put it just as close to the edge put it just as close to the edge as you can that gives you more room in your pocket and then just hold those down and flip it up there Now this is just a little Cricut squeegee, but it does really good for things like this. Acts as a bone folder. Now we need to put the magnet up here. So what I'll do is just take one and I clip it on there. Shows me exactly where I need it. And then I just pull that backing off and press that part down. there is our magnet right there and then I take just a little piece of paper take my half inch circle punch this is from stamp it up I'm not sure they're still available I will try to find a link if I can and put that link below I have no clue I've got these I got these a long time ago it's a little set of three so I'm not sure that they're still available, but they fit perfect right over those magnets. Okay, so we can close that down and close this up. And there is our book. Now, as you can see, this is gonna have to have quite a bit cut off and that's fine because once we trim it off, then I'll go in there and add my glue to have my pocket. So I am going to go over to the other camera. I have another table set up that I have another camera on. And I'm going to go over there and I'm going to do the trimming because I have a huge, one of those huge mats that I think I showed the other day. And my rotary cutter over there. And they don't really fit on this disc. So I'll go over there and show you how I trim them and how simple it is. And then we will get back to putting this book together. Okay, so we have all of our notebooks finished and let me make sure I've got all of the, not that we have to ink this right here because it's going to be in the spine until you take it out, but when I take it out, I want it to look pretty too. So here is our cover. We've already covered it with collage podge and this is the mat. So we've already covered it with that so that nothing will, if it gets wet, it's not going to hurt it. I did put a little bit of stickles on there just to kind of bring out those butterflies and things. But then I put the collage podge over it and covered everything so that it'd be good and safe. It's still very, very flexible. So what we're going to do now is we want to mark our spine where we want to put the holes for our elastic 
Now you need to mark this just as close down to the bottom as you can. I'm going to come up about a quarter of an inch. I just want it to be pretty close to the bottom, but I don't want it to be too close that, they're, that they might pull out. And let's see, we're going to do four. So there's one. So when you're putting four in here, you bring two through like that. And then tie them off. Or this is the way I do. I don't know how anybody else does theirs, but I do mine like this. And then I bring the other one. Let's hope I've got enough. Bring the other one through the same way. You're just looping it one time on the back like this, making sure you've got a full strap on this side. And then just make sure that it's not caught on anything or whatever, and then tie it. Don't tie it too tight, but you can't tie them too loose either. So just pull them a little bit and tie a knot. Now for a little while they may look like they're too tight, but that you know this is elastic, so it's going to stretch out. And put a little bit of hot glue or something on that knot so it doesn't pull out. Ahead and put a little ink on those. And then we're ready to put our signatures in. So I want this one to be the first. So you just need to go to the center, put it in there, and pull it until it gets to the crease. Lay it down. And then this one. Lay that down. Then let's put this one in the middle. And then this one for the back. There we go. There is our Traveler's Notebook completely finished with four signatures in there. It's going to be full, and we can you can take one out if you want and just leave the three in there. So I'm undecided as to what kind of closure I want to do. So right now, all I'm going to do is just put this Tim Holtz elastic around it. This is where you can hook it on the inside here if you want to. You just put a hole in here and run it through. But I'm not sure that's what I want to close it with. I'm not sure if I want to close it with this or if I want to close it with ribbon or lace or what. So right now I'm just going to leave it like that I think. Because this is going to be mine and I love it. Let me show you Melina's one I made for her. This is hers. Now I've just got hers closed like mine because I don't know how she wants to close it. But I did her signatures the same way. I put her a large pocket here with that in there. So all of hers are done the same way as mine are. And I'll put her a pocket on the back as well. I put her a charm on here. And then she had ordered two of these pens. So we got those in. These are the planner pens. So that those are going to go really good with it. And then with that excess paper that I had, I, I saw where Genevieve had told that she tore it and then glued it together and made a little notebook. So I went ahead and used a piece of the scrap paper and made her a little notebook. 
to go with it. I don't think I'm going to put anything else on the outside because I want to carry this in my purse. And if I put anything else on the outside, it'll probably get torn off with me tossing it back and forth in my purse. But um, I think that is all I'm going to do. Let me know what you think about this, and we will talk to you guys later. Thanks so much for watching, and please don't forget to give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button.